today we're taking a look at how to make some scars, bruises, and bleeding cuts with some DIY makeup, some of which is made from stuff you probably already have. Guys, we have Callie back here in the studio and she's gonna be helping us out with something fun today. Callie, what is it we're gonna be doing? Well, I'm gonna beat you up. Oh. But I'm gonna do it in a nice way. We've got some DIY Halloween makeup styles that we're gonna be doing. Bruises, blood, cuts, it's gonna be interesting. But with some household supplies that you can find pretty darn easy, all the way up to some things that you might find at a local theater store or even Walmart. All right, so what are these supplies we're looking at? Some of these I think I recognize and some of them I also recognize, but that's because I've done some theater makeup before. <laughs> so just walk us through a little bit of what we've got here on the table. Flour, baby powder, Vaseline, pretty darn simple. With these supplies, you can actually make a scar putty. Now, I do have theatrical scar wax. That is something that a lot of people will use in makeup and theater, but you can make it at home for a lot cheaper. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Moving up to liquid latex. Now, not all latex is made the same. You're gonna see the difference between our Walmart latex and uh, some theatrical supply makeup. I'm gonna show you how you can basically make it look the same, work the same for you. And then liquid collodion, which uh, it's probably more fun to just show you what that does. So here's the plan. Callie is going to take some of our makeup supplies and she's going to start applying them to me and explaining how to do it to make it look like I suffered some grievous injury like maybe someone hit me in the face with a big old weapon. The basic idea when you're doing makeup like this, sometimes less is more. You kind of want to focus on the bone structure and you also want to focus on where the skin's really going to split. So if Nate were to get hit, say right there, he'd probably end up with a black eye, some, some swelling around the eye, and then a pretty good slice on his face. So let's see if we can make that look real. So the first step is we're going to take some flour and we're going to take some Vaseline. We're going to mix them together. We're going to tone it to a tint to match your skin. Uh, and then we're going to add it on. We'll probably add a little bit of spirit gum, also something that you can find at your local Walmart, grocery store, theatrical supply store so that it's going to stick a little bit better. And then we're going to add some color and some blood. Let's get this party started. We don't actually need this much, but just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Vaseline, petroleum Vaseline. jelly, yep. normal stuff. And I, brand doesn't matter, but... Really doesn't. I just got the regular brand, just picked it up from Walmart. Uh, I have experimented using baby powder as well. Works pretty darn good, but the absorbency is a little bit different. So we're going to stick with the flour, which is what a lot of people use. Uh, and it's going to make the tinting a little bit easier and a little bit more opaque, which in this case is actually going to be a good thing when we're applying color over it. Usually you're going to want it a little bit thinner, but this should be fine. So what we're looking for is basically a paste-like consistency, almost a Play-Doh. It's actually going to be very similar to when you make Proto Putty. At this point, I would say that we have approximately twice as much flour as we do Vaseline by volume. So if you touch it, does it stick to your skin? Nope, not really. No, okay, not good. So, much. so right now we've got pretty much the perfect consistency. So that's what we're looking for. So now... Here's the fun part. I had to makeup match Nate. So if you go to the makeup store because you want to make this, you, you ask one of the nice people working there where you can find liquid foundation in your skin color and they'll be very helpful and they'll show you where to go. In case you wondered what color Nate's skin is, it's basically primer white. It's classic ivory. You're about as pale as you can possibly be. That hurts my feelings <laughs> a little bit, but it's very <laughs> true. This stuff is not like super runny thin, it, it's kind of like ketchup consistency. And that's also good. Bottle. And now I mix this up the same way, right? Yes. So this consistency now, I would say sugar cookie dough. Yeah, that's a good description. Don't eat it though. Don't, no, you eat most things, don't eat this. Oh. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mm. Mm-mm. Is it lurking? Ah, I can feel it tingling on my gum. They're so stale. Put it down. <laughs> all right, so when it comes to doing this sort of makeup, you don't have to break the bank. That's why we're kind of doing this all DIY style. So you'll actually recognize some of this stuff. If you've ever been to a Halloween store or even Walmart, these are just some really simple grease paints. And if you apply them right, 
you're gonna get some pretty darn cool colors. So I'm sure that Nate's skin is very clean, but just in case to make sure that everything applies properly, we're gonna use some Witch Hazel Astringent. It's just a little bit gentler than some others. As an astringent, it means it's going to strip oils off of my face, and we don't want that long-term or forever, but it makes it so that all of the makeup can stick to my skin a lot better. Once the skin is clean, you wanna add a layer of spirit gum. Now this is gonna help that putty stay a little bit better, especially because it is a DIY mixture that we've made. Spirit gum is like skin glue made out of pine trees, I think. As she's dabbing this on with her finger, I can feel it as it dries out, it starts getting stickier and stickier. And you can probably see how it was getting more and more stuck to her finger as she lightly tapped it in place. So what I'm looking for is a really, really thin layer. You can kind of see that we've got this really shiny, tacky surface. I want to work quickly before it dries too much, but I also don't want it to be so thick that it gets gummy. If it gets too thick, it's going to start pulling away from the skin, and then not only is your prosthetic not going to stick, but you could potentially hurt your patient? Victim? Victim. So to apply this makeup, it's not gonna be very difficult. You don't really need anything very fancy. I'm really just starting out with a cut popsicle stick. Make sure the ends aren't sharp. Again, we're really not trying to injure him. Just make it look like I injured him. I really don't wanna get in trouble for hurting Nate. <laughs> so I went for just more of an angled spatula. The idea is basically that we wanna be able to smooth down the edges, make sure it looks pretty darn seamless between his skin and the prosthetic. So even with my spirit gum, the edges are starting to pull up a little bit because that flower is absorbing the Vaseline. So we're going to take a Q-tip and we're going to add a little bit more Vaseline just around the edges just to smooth things out. Well, I think that's at least going to be a pretty darn good arc for our cut, so let's add some bruising. At this point, it just comes down to color theory. We want to make sure that we can match Nate's skin as closely as possible. He's got a very pale skin, but a pink undertone. So here's the fun part. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to use anything super crazy. This was $3 at Walmart. This was, I think, two, and that's really all you need. So we're gonna take our $2 brushes, and let's start with some black and purple. Make sure that you also use some skin tones, but really just mix and match until you get what you want. So this is basically just the same as those little grease pencils. It's just even softer. So one of the important parts when you're working on this, again, just take your time, be patient, and don't use one color. When you use one of those colors on these really bright, you know, color palettes, you saw that I was working with a bright red and a bright purple, but when you start blending them, that's when you get it to look really realistic, even with the really, really cheap makeup. This palette is probably $7, so out of all of our makeup today, probably one of the more expensive ones but it lasts me for years, and I can use it for stuff like this all the time. I'm gonna be honest, I've only ever done this to myself once. Usually I'm putting makeup on other people. What does that feel like? It's barely noticeable, honestly, unless I start moving my face around, then I can sort of feel it being tight in spots, like where the spirit gum and where the prosthetic putty is sort of like resisting where my skin would normally move. But it's not then, uncomfortable. No, not at all, like okay. it's less, of a feel, like if I had just a band-aid on my face, I think I would feel that more than I feel this. So when you're doing makeup like this, you'll notice that I'm not putting nearly as much red on the prosthetic as I am around the eye. When your skin swells up in an actual cut or injury, you're gonna have less blood to that area. Now there is gonna be blood in the wound, of course, but the redness is actually gonna be swelling around it and not necessarily right on top of the area. How you feeling, Nate? I got beat up. Yeah. So we've got a pretty good shiner. We've got his face pretty darn puffy. You can still see the uh, the Vaseline and the uh, the flower coming through a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna slice his cheek open and add some blood. You're gonna see that it's just gonna pull that wax right off. So to keep it from doing that, we're gonna add some Vaseline. Oh, 
hold still while I cut your face open. That cut's going really jagged. That's actually gonna look kinda cool. Now this was just a happy accident when Nate smiles, Nate smile. <laughs> you get this little crinkle right here. So I'm actually gonna use that into the split itself to sort of add on to the, the horror factor. Now all I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of reddening and then we're going to set it because right now it's very shiny. You can tell that there's Vaseline or something there. So we're gonna dull it down, make it match the matte of Nate's skin and then we're gonna finish with adding some blood. Are there other ways to do this? Yes. Is this more entertaining? Also yes. That smells terrible. <laughs> There are lots of ways that you can actually make homemade blood, but because we've already made our homemade putty, we're gonna go and use some from a theatrical supply store. You can also get this at Walmart and at any Halloween shop that you wanna find. Make it look most realistic, let gravity do its work. I'm barely tapping it in there and I'm gonna let it just sort of fall the way it naturally would. Now let's go out in public. I got beat up by a girl. <laughs> All right, well, we've successfully beat the crud out of Nate. Sorry, Nate. But I haven't gotten to use the uh, latex or the liquid clothing yet. Hey, Mark, come here. <laughs> so, uh, so what'd you guys do at work today? I uh, messed up pretty bad. Got beat up by a girl. Yeah. All right, you have successfully blackened my eye and bloodied up my face. Uh, but at this time, we want to see how hard is it to take this off? Like, if, you, if I were doing this for my Halloween makeup, going to a party, something like that, I get done at the end of the night, is it going to take me forever to clean my face up? No, nope, that's kind of the best part about this sort of makeup. So, this is just Wish Hazel. It's an astringent. Wipe it right off. Mm. Gross. Just wiping off part of my skin here. <laughs> so I had that on for probably two or maybe three hours and it was staying on just fine. Like it worked pretty well. I think you could easily have that on for an evening for a party, something like that. But honestly, if you just take some makeup wipes to it, it's not gonna hurt your skin. The worst thing is the spirit gum and that'll come off in the shower if you really need it to. So. I think even most of that's gone. Thank you to Callie for sharing her knowledge with us. I hope some of you have some fun makeup that you want to try for Halloween. If you do, tag us on social media, hashtag TKOR, hashtag the King of Rand. I'm one of those. We want to check it out. Guys, that's it for today, but the fun doesn't end here. We've got more for you to see. That box at the top will take you directly to our last video. You should go check that one out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you hit this bomb in the middle, you'll be subscribed to our channel, and that way you'll never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.